is that? You don't have to screw around with them, mess around with all the plastics. guys welcome back to the channel sorry i've been uploading in a while just been really busy the kids had spring break so i kind of hung out with them and uh you know just had some fun i just got a bunch of stuff going on i'm fixing this atv over here it doesn't have any spark it's a buddy of mine I told him i would fix it so i wanted to just bang that out and get that out of the way looks like it's the stator so um other than that uh got some new tires for calvin my son's dirt bike so got a real good deal i mean they're look at all the the nubs on these still so um i'm gonna when i do that i also had to get an inner tube because his rear tire kept going flat so when i take those off i'm gonna powder coat those rims black real quick and so um other than that uh i just got a bunch of stuff going on so yeah we're getting we're prepping the yard we're gonna we're gonna do our uh our garden soon so that's gonna be some videos for other people you know stuff i do for other groups of people so so i'm just going to give you guys an update i'm going to go ahead and put an hour meter tachometer on my bike and uh, i'll show you guys that and then uh we're going to go from there and hopefully uh yeah you guys will get a kick out of uh the install all right so stay tuned guys we'll see you in a minute i'm going to go ahead and install this today you can barely see it because my lighting sucks but either way, I'm going to go ahead and try and put this on. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wash the bike up. And then uh, once I wash the bike up, I'm going to go ahead and pull, uh, dry it off, pull it back in the garage. And then I'm going to go ahead and try and get this thing installed. So stay tuned. All right guys, so this is what I got right here. Um, it's just a little digital tachometer, hour meter, and it's got a little CR2032 battery. And um, it's got all these little options here, programmable maintenance interval timer, programmable RPM alert, max RPM, recall, re uh, replaceable battery. It's got resettable for job time, non-resettable for total time though, and then programmable backlit, on off auto, IP rating, blah, blah, blah. So it didn't come with any instructions. The only thing it did come with was this little 3M thing here. Uh, this part goes on the frame. This part obviously goes on the back of the hour meter itself. So you can change that. But this wire here just gets wrapped around the cord of the spark wire. So, And then it also came with a couple of, couple of zip ties and... It's funny, it came with a couple studs and then some bolts. 
instead of actually, or I'm sorry, studs and um, nuts there. A couple washers instead of actually having like screws. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this stuff off. And uh, I already got this done here. Move this. Instead of taking all the plastics off, you just want to take the two bottom portions here off, and then you'll be able to pop the whole tank off. Let me go ahead and pop the fuel valve off. More rocks. Holy crap, dude. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at the size of that sucker. That was from the ORV park last year. It's gigantic. It was stuck right up in the bottom of the radiator shroud there. All right, so then take this off. And you want to pop off your rubber tank strap. And the tank shall come right out. Just like that. Maybe you don't have to screw around with the messing around with all the plastics. Alright, so all I'm gonna do here is wrap this around these wires here and that should do the trick so the first thing I'm gonna do though is just go ahead and mount this tape on the back and I'm just gonna mount it right there All right, so I think right here would probably be good enough. Gives you quite a bit. Let's go ahead and make sure the fuel tank fits on there properly. Nice. And you can still see it pretty well from the side. All right, good deal. I don't know if it, I'm not sure if you're supposed to cut it. This is what I'll do. I'll, I'll just wrap it from the one end. I'm going to check my plug too while I'm at it. So what I'll do, just go ahead and wrap it. And then I'm not watching the video at this moment. Um, might have to retry this a couple times.
says to make sure they're wrapped nice and tight. Like that. I'm just going to snip this last little bit off. Ooh, almost grabbed the wire. Now I'll route this guy back around. I like to do the, the circle. And give it a twist and bring it around. Twist it, bring it around. Just like you would do with um, like your climbing ropes if you're an arbor. And it gives you a nice wrap. Wonder if this is going to affect it at all. All right, so that's obviously dangling a little too much there. I mean, I can always move this too. It's not a big deal. I've seen some people mount them up here, but it doesn't really. seem like there would be enough room side to side for that or maybe like on the top of the fuel tank or something I don't know we're gonna give it a test here I'm gonna go ahead and just zip tie this stuff out of the and this I'm just gonna use the hot start cable here and then just tie it on the back of that that's clear enough word to the wise be very careful with these plugs. They are just about 30 bucks a piece. And when I first got this bike, I had to do some repairs on it. Well, clearly I didn't realize how delicate those small little spark plugs are because about the I'd say the 10th time I took it out and put it back, I snapped it off inside the head. But all I had to do was, all I had to do was pop the head off 
and then back it out. And it was loose, so it wasn't a big deal. But yeah, luckily my local parts store had the right plug. Kind of hard to tell against my skin. There we go. Good deal. So R zero four zero nine B dash eight. Two thousand six two fifty. Get my little three dollars out. Love these guys. So nice. I found so many uses for them guys. So once it once it touches and it gets like stops turning by hand. You don't have to turn it very much. Just give it a little snug up and you're good to go. Strap. Yeah, I guess I could have put it on top of the fuel tank. The 2007 I'm going to be working on, which you guys will see soon, missing all kinds of stuff. Thing was a mess. Owner was originally asking $1,600 for it, and yeah, I just couldn't bring myself. Nice enough fella, but just couldn't bring myself to pay that for it. Okay, so we're going to pop the seat back on real quick, open the garage door, and Fire it up and see what kind of results we got. All right, so we know that it works, but that's it. I'm gonna have to go in and check some of the settings and then uh, go from there.
it, guys. It's pretty easy. Um, it's just a 12 millimeter bolt to drain the engine oil. And then uh, you have these 5 16 inch bolts right here that hold the oil filter in. And then you got your 17 millimeter cap and a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the case protector on, which I, you know, I typically have to remove. You can try and wiggle it out, but it's easier just to pop it off, get it out of the way. It's probably gonna be pretty warm. Well, actually don't even look that bad, but well, yeah, I guess it does. We get it down in there. It's gonna be hot. And I just prop my oil pan up with a six by six. Not exactly sure how long it's been. It's been uh, it's, it's been a little while. I wouldn't say an abusive while, <laughs> but uh, I got my hour meter on there as you guys saw. So that's the whole point. So I can keep track of it, make this engine last as long as possible. All right, and while that's draining, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this little case cover off here. Like I said, it's just a 10 millimeter bolt. That'll give us access to the oil filter here. Let's see if I can do this without spilling any oil. Inch it forward just a hair. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a capped, cut, one quart oil can. And then that will catch most of the oil that comes out. There's not gonna be a whole lot anyway, but. Got a spring in there. So just be careful where you set everything. Like I said, not a whole lot in there. You just want to examine for any type of shavings. This looks pretty good, so let's see anything. Always a good sign. Hopefully there's nothing down at the bottom here. So you want to take a clean portion of your rag and then Tell you whether or not there's anything to worry about in there. I don't know if you guys can see this. Not sure if that's anything to worry about. Yeah, this is the side. There wasn't anything in the filter though. Not that I saw. What's that?
It just kind of looks like and it's bendable. It just seems like it's kind of like glue or something, probably part of the filter. Either way, it was stopped by the filter, so that's good. <laughs> Go ahead and put the plug back in. Set that right there. Plug gets torqued to 16 foot pounds. Alright, so I just use these Tusk First Line oil filters. Get these from Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Tusk First Line oil filter, 115493005. This is for an 06 CRF250R. So, what you want to do is you want to put it in with the O ring facing out. And that will seal against the cap. And the cap is where the valve setup is. Something you can do to help the spring to stick on the inside of the filter as you're putting it in is just dab some grease on the end. I got that little tip from Cameron Nymella. You can check out his channel. The link is in the description. This is what I use, Lucas High Performance Motorcycle Oil. It's semi-synthetic, 1040. It's got all the right requirements per the service manual for Honda. good stuff I haven't had any problems with it yet but we'll see as time progresses so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and soak this oil filter a little bit first and I get it pretty much soaked go ahead and just slip it in And make sure you get any dirt off of the ceiling surface here of the cap and o-ring I've heard people say you gotta replace these every time but I just replaced this one not that long ago when I first got the bike so as you guys know I believe I told you guys I got this last spring put a full gasket kit on and everything all right now you'll notice that there's two holes here and one at the top well you want to make sure that you have those holes lined up they go on the bottom there Those get torqued to seven foot pounds. Using the right socket, of course. <laughs> Five sixteenths.
and this gets 700 cc's. It's like 0.69. Go ahead and put this case protector back on. All right, so these are 946 milliliters. So you want to be right around 250 left. That's a good way to tell. So you want just about that much left. Want to make sure it's level, so we're just over, probably about 460 right there, 470. There we go. That looks good. Let's go ahead and clean the rim off here. That thing care of. Make sure you don't have any grit and goop. That's actually, a, I used a three quarter on that. Make it nice and snug. So that's it, it's pretty simple. All right, so I think I may have figured out why my RPMs aren't reporting properly on this tack and uh, hour meter. I went on to Rocky Mountain ATV MC and I watched them install theirs. And what I saw was that they showed a difference between the way you hook these up to coils that are on the plug and coils that have a wire. Well, I hooked it up to where or in a way that it was showing the what or it was um reading off the wire when actually I should have hooked it up to where it was reading off of the coil. So I need to unwrap it from the coil. I need to unwrap it from the wires and wrap it around the head of the coil. So I think that's why I'm having an issue. So that's why this tank and seat are coming off so I can get back to this real quick. Fuel line off. Pop off the fuel valve. Okay, so all I need to do is just take this off. Pop these wires off. And then it needs to get wrapped around this right here.
We'll just go ahead and unwrap this right here. I mean, it was detecting volt, or it was detecting RPMs, but <laughs> just not the right ones. Or not in the right manner, shall I say. All right, so it says to just wrap it around this th three or four times. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to unplug this. Make it a hair easier to deal with. There we go. That's what I was looking for. They said three or four times. I'm just going to undo this little zip tie, being that it's going to be smaller of a wrap. Why waste it? All right. And this wire looks almost a little too thick to be able to wrap it around there three or four times. Luckily, these were in reach. I didn't go gra grab them. Oops. All right. Stick them close by. Maybe I'll end up putting two on here. That one like that. This one here, I'm going to tuck it under this time. That'll work. Well, guess what? We're about to find out, aren't we? Getting this sucker to lock in. Oh, I think I heard it. Get the pliers. 
handy dandy three dollar ones. All right, that looks good to me. Have to see if it works now. And the other thing I want to do is set this this thing up to where it's got the right intervals as far as last service. Then I can just check it. Be good to go. So this should be all right now. By the way, if you guys aren't subscribed and like the channel, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you guys are notified of future updates and stuff. So I got a lot more videos coming, so definitely don't want to miss out. Got a bunch of projects going. You guys can see a lot of stuff I got. I'm going to try and put one more zip tie just to make sure. dollars for the set it's even got some nippers on it all right let's slap it all back together funny what this actually came on backwards when to where the valve was facing out someone worked on it put it back together and it didn't I don't know if they preferred it that way or what but I like it the way it's supposed to go All right, let's go ahead and get things set up and we'll get her started up and go from there. Okay, so I took a glance, a quick glance at the instruction manual that I found online. And so total just shows the total hours on the bike or machine. Job shows the, the amount of time since it was last reset. So let's say if you rebuilt the engine you would reset the job. So you would reset that to zero and then it would tell you how much time has been put on the bike or machine since you last did some sort of big maintenance on it or repair. So then you obviously have service that'll count down to the next service. Uh, this actually tells you what RPM it's set at to alert you. So these go up to like 12,000 RPMs, I think. So I don't want it showing the light and blinking every time that I, you know, go too high. Because that'll just kill the battery. And I think these go up to like 20,000 RPMs. These, this actual unit, not the bike. So I'm going to put it at 13, let it sit there, and then once that's done, okay, then we'll go to 
max RPM just shows the last max RPM. And then this is what I found out. So it's one fire per ro one rotation. So in the manual it says for four strokes with two cylinders, set it to that. Or two strokes with one cylinder. And then at the very bottom, it says for four strokes with one cylinder, there actually is a firing pattern, technically, every revolution. So you can set it to that as well. So for a four stroke with one cylinder, set it to one fire per one revolution because that's how they say that the spark actually fires. Bang, 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 bang. Kind of like a two stroke, but you know, obviously there's four strokes on this. So that's why it's working right. So good deal. So now we got it all set up. Hope you guys found some useful tips here. And you know, this uh, encourages you to get an hour meter on your bike. So you know, we need to get more of these out there so people are aware of how much time they put on their bike and bikes and machines can last longer the whole nine yards. You know how it is.
perfect. Good deal. So that's it. If you guys aren't subscribed, you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. Make sure you share with family and friends on social media and networking. So we'll see you guys in the next video. If you guys have any questions, hit them up in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, so yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. So come on back. All right, take care. God bless.